For a deeper dive, deeper dive into the world of AI journalism, Ray Wong, founder, principal, analyst, chairman of Constellation Research. Good to see you from C3 and Transformation AI Conference uh, in Boca Raton, Florida. Look, I could not be more scared. AI can replace me. That's fine. But the stuff that I'm reading about what AI could do to and say to people and do things and the machines they can control, you can't tell me that we're all not a little worried. And even Elon Musk came out and said this might be one of the most dangerous inflection points in history. You know, the challenge here is really about authenticity. We're going to need more people to stop disinformation, and AI is going to be used to combat AI disinformation. You can see that already. There's some interesting scams going on right now where callers will sign you up or set you up on a Zoom call, and they'll ask you a bunch of questions, and they'll use, like, you know, there's a problem with your account, we need to talk to you, uh, and people unsuspectingly will actually put enough information out there so someone can make another video to blackmail them with things they did not say. So that is already happening out there in the world of cybersecurity and things to watch out. But in terms of journalism, what's important is that it's going to accelerate story development. Think about all the time that it takes to do research on an issue or on a story. At least the information is aggregated in one place, but we're still going to need journalists to figure out what's real, to get multiple points of view, to do fact-checking, and to make sure that there is no disinformation. But, so, so I don't but, think but it's going to go away. Hold on. How, so. how, how is that different than, than me or Mike or any of us who work in the newsroom going to Google and looking up something and go, okay, I, I fact-checked it, and that this is the person's title, and this is what they believe in, and then, and then talking about it? How does AI take that one step further? Well, just like there's going to be information that's going to be aggregated very quickly for you, there will also be other tools that will be created to do validation. And so there'll be checks on the AI as well. So right now we're at the very beginning. We're just getting information. It's unfiltered. It's a fire hose of information. Now it's actually come to a point where we can actually reuse it and package it. But we also need tools to check for disinformation. And I think those are what are missing at the moment. They're not there to validate fact check. If you do a, if you do a chat GPT on my name, my mom is completely thrilled. It says, I grabbed graduated from Harvard. I didn't. I wrote a book for Harvard Business Publishing, but it says I actually graduated from Harvard, and those are the things that need to be collected. So there's a lot of human and machine training side by side that's needed to make this a lot more precise. Well, I, I, I was going to say, if you and I start a, a tweet or a, a discussion of how the moon is square, and enough of us talk about it, then we go to chat GBT and ask him, is the moon square? It might actually convince us that the moon is square because isn't the AI only as good as the data inputted into the system? You know, if you think of a black box, it doesn't know if it's right or wrong. It doesn't know if it's Phil, real or fake. Phil, you're completely correct. And that, that, what we need to do is actually have some level one AI ethics. And we've got five criteria that are important. First one, the algorithms need to be transparent because we've got to figure out how they work. We also have to have them explainable so people understand if there's bias, where is the bias? Let's say I'm discriminating against left-handed, purple hair people, and we didn't know that. We want to be able to reverse those decisions. And so the third one is we have to have it reversible. And then, of course, it takes time to train these models to be at a level of perfection, especially if it comes to human life or healthcare in an area, for example. And then the last piece is we've got to have a human-led approach because while we're operating at machine scale, what that means is if we don't insert a human in the process, the machines will completely take over and we have no control stops. I mean, I, I'm always pro-human, so to speak. Um, do you think that if, if, if we work for a newspaper and read write an article, do you think we should disclose the fact that our writing was assisted by AI? I mean, in other words, being transparent that, hey, AI helped write this particular newspaper article? <laughs> you might want to do that, right? If there's any kind of legal liability, um, you might be able to put it on them. Uh, but I think some people are starting to do that. This post was written by a human, or this article was contributed to with ChatGPT. We're starting to see those kind of things in place. I don't know if it's going to come to the point like FTC disclosures or any kind of similar for FCC requirements. Uh, but I think it is important to understand that was there a human fact check there? Was there an AI fact check? I think people are going to want to know how to add that to the journalism process. Well, I mean, let, let's just say there's a paywall and, and people are paying us to write these articles. I mean, there are two articles, one's written by a human and one's written by chat GBT and y you, you can dial it down to which one you can actually monetize because 
I, for one, will pay for the one that humans write, but I do not want to pay for the one that a computer writes. I mean, I mean, there has to be something there. I think we're going to find out what the cost factor is. You may have aggregation services just like we do today um, that are completely automated, that bring information together. And you may have those that are actually curated by humans and, and you might find more value. I think we had a lot of choice in the marketplace. 10 seconds real quick. Who's in charge of regulating or making sure all this is going to be okay? <laughs> I think we don't have the rules or the infrastructure to do that today, and I think we better get on it very quickly. So tech policymakers need to think about how to create broad enough rules so we succeed and narrow enough rules to protect the public. All right, Ray, uh, I'm counting on you to take the lead on this. Uh, thank you very much.